to create a controller class. So from here, we would be calling the service class. So this is the typical pattern in the Spring Boot, or uh, like this is a typical hierarchy. So define a controller package, version controller. So here, uh, this is a REST controller, let's hand it using the REST controller. And let's define the uh, endpoint here. So let's name it API persons. So, um, so let's have a logger defined for uh, logging any exceptions or something like that. So let's define that logger private final. So yeah, it's right running final logger is called this one. So we, so we should be importing the SL4 shipping. SL4 shipping. So yeah, now uh, for each uh, operation incurred, we should define one method here. So first is to create person. So let's define the post mapping. This since the post call, we define the post mapping. So let's create this method, public response entity, should be written the response entity. This is a type list uh, here it's don't return anything uh, for save purpose so create person just import this request body just import the person and also since this interacts with the service layer let's create automate the service thing person service this is also a private variable save and the person so let's surround it by the try catch for catching any exceptions uh, so try so also here if it's success we return it here return response entity dot status we should even status for that so it's created status let's HTTP dot http status dot created add build so just building that response entity and then for any exceptions we catch it and we return internal server error so now let's define a method for getting all persons it's a get mapping so public response entity it returns a list of persons let's import list so here it also says this one so let's put that so yeah we're just getting uh, from the person service we're getting all persons so if any exception we just log it so next is we have to define endpoint for updating the person. So let's define the method here. Put mapping that is. So that's gonna be a uh, ID. We just uh, for the given uh, this path, it they'll just send ID here. So yeah. So let's define that method. Update person. That's gonna be path variable. So string ID. So now it's same thing here. We just set the ID uh, with whatever ID we get, and then we just update the person. Then uh, we should be having the endpoint for the deleting purpose also. So that's a delete mapping. So let's define a method for that. So it's same. We just need to call the delete person. So yeah, we got our methods created. So let's try running the application. So it automatically builds when you run. So now let's go to Postman. So let's call the first get API. So yeah, it says that empty because we don't have any person created, right? So let's create a person. So let's create a person. 
So I just added the payload here. Uh, so let's try submitting this. So it says 201 created. So the person will be created. So we can see that using the get API here. So the person is created with the ID, name, email, and yes. So let's create another person. Let's name it Joe. And age is 42. This is Toronto created. Let's check it here. So yeah, we have created. So now let's test the update API. So let's have this different here. Get put. So we can take the ID from here. Let's assume that we put the name of the Joe wrongly. We can update it here using the put API. Let's go to the body. Uh, we can fetch the same body here. Go to raw JSON. So let's have it 21. So yeah, it says 200. Okay. So let's check it now. So yeah, we see that the age is updated. So now let's say we need to delete the AOE person. Let's delete that. Take the ID here, go to the delete API and paste it. So yeah, we see that uh, it's 204 and then we'll check that it would be deleted. So he, uh, so here we see that uh, the AOE is person is deleted. So in table also, we can see only Joe here. We don't have A here. We got the base to Spring Boot and Google BigQuery and built a simple CRUD application indicating both. We ensured our application has proper error handling and logging for better maintainability. Thank you for tuning into this sort of hack code. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more coding tutorials and problem solving tips. If you have any questions or suggestions for future topics, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until next time, happy coding.